Yo, welcome to another edition of Jeff and Jeff here on Orange Bloods Live. I'm Jeff Ketchum. That is Jeff Bowerman. He's from Groggy Dog. They're the company that makes this video go. They're one of the great sponsors of orangebloods.com. Make sure if you're looking for new apparel, if you're looking for a print job, uh, if you're looking for any of the things that they do, you just go to groggydog.com, check it out. Great customer service. Um, that's kind of what they specialize in. They want to make sure that your order that your business is done uh, in a way that will make you forever go back to Groggy Dog. Plus, they've got one of the coolest mascot emblems in <laughs> existence. Uh, yeah. Jeff, we got Florida this week. The Longhorns coming off of a bye week. Last week, we were fairly nebulous in our conversations. It was very much, what do we want to see over the course of the next four weeks and going into the season? This weekend, very specific to the Gators. Uh, I want to remind everybody, like, comment, subscribe to the page hit that thumbs up button and by all means jump in uh, and leave your comments, please. As we start thinking about the number one area, the thing that you want to see more than anything else this weekend. And Oh, by the way, I'm going to be in the stadium as yes, a casual good. viewer. Uh, How long has it been? How long has it been since you were at DKR? A decade. That's what, yeah, that's what you were saying earlier this week, I believe. It's okay, been a decade. So, so they, need, I, they need to put on a show for the Ketchum family. That's, that's what I'm up. saying. The thing yeah. is, is, you know, my kids need to be impressed enough by the experience that they know what Texas Longhorn football is. Because yes. I think they live in a bubble where <laughs> what I actually do for a living doesn't register at all. Oh yeah, well, they'll hopefully make the connection, Vivo Boulevard and and Orange Bloods, and and see all the people. I know you're going to be out mingling with the locals. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, the thing is, usually I'm very antisocial. I kind of just don't want to be <laughs> noticed or seen. Yeah. But tomorrow, I'm hoping that a few people will come up and say hello, just yeah. to kind of impress the kids a little bit. They're like, <laughs> oh. Hey, I know, I know from being down at Bevo Boulevard, you'll you'll have people hollering at hollering at you. Be like, these, people, these people know who dad is. Dad is yes. just some bum who yeah. works from the house all the time. So no, I'm really looking forward to Good it. For y'all. Uh, but I all will right, be going into the stadium with a lot of things on my mind. Yes, as a, my number one, my number one uh is execution, right? Did we clean up the the penalties in the process? And are we in a position? to execute on both sides of the ball at a high level because uh, you know, sitting there during the bye week and, and, and watching football and thinking about it, I'm, you know, I'm convinced that Texas has the talent to have the coaching staff, the process is there. Now it's a matter of going out and doing it. So I want to see execution from the first kickoff till Gabriel blows his horn. That's my, that's my number one. You know what's funny is these uh, – this is a good coaching staff. It has to drive them crazy that this is yeah. such a sloppy football team at this point in the year because I think the coaches would probably agree that this is all a reflection of their coaching, right? A disciplined, yeah. yes. good team. The, the expectations well, would be higher. So – it wouldn't be number one on my list. I'm going to tell you my number one in a second. You left it for me at number two. I did, I did. But I understand really clearly why this would be I, – I can understand why this would be number one. It's one thing to get beat by a better team. Right? If Georgia yeah. comes to DKR and they're just better, you can handle that. It's when – you're trying to figure out if your quarterback can play and he's constantly in first and 15 and first yes. and 20. And it's like, yes. well, is he, is, is he in a slump? Is there something wrong or are these penalties killing the offense? And it's kind of all over the field. The Vernon brought in first half suspension yeah. on Saturday. That didn't need to happen. So I'm with you. Let's see some clean football on Chris, Saturday. Let's execute. Yes. All right. What's number two? Go ahead. I left it's you with the last. Yes, of course I knew it's it. Quinn. Yep, number three is number two. Yep. Here's the thing. If you were to tell me right now, catch, you can go into the stadium. And I guess I shouldn't say catch because it's Jeff and Jeff. Yeah. So Jeff. But I call you catch. I, 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 when I'm talking about you, I call you catch. I don't know if I've ever called you Jeff. So. Jeff. Okay. Um, you can pick any of the scenarios 
with no other details known, right? So it's, you can go in on Saturday and what you'll watch is an incredibly clean, precise team, doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Uh, No penalties in the entire game. And you can know nothing else about the game. That's one option. Okay. If you tell me the other option is that Quinn gets his mojo back and lights up Florida to such a degree that we put the quarterback thing away. Yeah. For, for, because next week they, they go on the road to Fayetteville. Yeah. It's going to be tough. The last time that happened, I think Steve Sarkeesian got in the Arkansas loss in 2021 is the most embarrassing loss of the Steve Sarkeesian era. And I know that, you know, you could, there's maybe a few that you could, you could nitpick and put into that kind of category. But that was a humiliation that yeah. caused him to completely change everything he thought he knew about that particular team. We know that's going to be a game. I don't want the Quinn Ewers narratives that have existed for a month now, ever since yeah. he comes back from an injury. He hasn't been at his best. Eight of his last 12 quarters have been played at pretty horrendous worst in the in the nation levels. And he's so much better than that. He's so much better than to be mentioned with guys who are legitimately terrible. But the numbers are the numbers. You know what they say about stats, but at the end of the day, they are not subjective. They just tell you a statistical story. I want to come out of this game and go, okay, Quinn's back, baby. He's back. Can he still win the Heisman? <laughs> I want I want to see a performance that causes people to go, oh, that's why he's going to be a first-round pick in April, and, and that's why he should start over Arch Manning. It, it's been a month of yeah. people having to give reasons Ra- rational, for why they think he yeah. should be the starting quarterback instead of just being able to go, that's our guy. Did, yep. you, did you see it with your eyes? Yeah. What yeah. they say a picture's worth a thousand words. Give me some pictures on Saturday, Quinn. Yeah. Because I don't want to have to say any of the words, <laughs> thousands of words that yes. have, have come along with this. So for me, that, you can yeah. give me and look, if you tell me that, and it's like Texas wins 48 to 47, the defense crumbles. <laughs> yeah. And you could okay. Other than a loss, anything other than Quinn's great, but they lose. I think I would almost accept because no matter what, the most important thing that this team has to has to have going down the home stretch is Quinn Ewers playing at his apex level. Because if they can get that, they're going to compete for a national championship. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. look, I I went with the rational, you know, execute, clean it up, penalties, right lock in you went with the emotional right well give, i think i'm going with everything I, yeah. I think that because if, if you have that you're set up like you said to, to make because i don't know what's more rational than i want the quarterback on the number five team in america to look like the, the way yes. quarterback for the number five team in america should look that sounds rational to it me does. but That's you know what that. there's definitely some emotion i i would i would go but i would also say there's some emotion behind the sloppiness wanting to be cleaned up too. Why do you want that to be cleaned up? Because it drives your head in. <laughs> yes. So I use less profanity during profanity during exactly the, game. the best version of model. yourself comes yes. out when when the team is is clean. Yes. Okay, look, we don't need to go into the Quinn thing that much, right? I don't need to give stats. I just need to mention it. It's at the top of my list. <laughs> we can move on to number three. Yep. What's number three for you? Let's make Florida one dimensional. Let's make them one dimensional, right? Which dimension? Well, sh- sh- shut off that run, right? They got some <laughs> big backs. Shut off that run and force them to throw the ball. I don't think they're going to. Did you I, see I, how bad the quarterback play was last week? Now, I know it was Georgia. So yeah. maybe not fair, but. Yeah. yeah. Bad. No, I know. I know. I, uh, but I, I don't, I want Texas to, you know, let's get stops on first and second down and let's, let's see that because. You know, if they can get to that point, then they can, you know, put the game in hand and and, and go from there. So let's make them one dimensional because that's, again, Mississippi State, they kind of hung around because they ran the football, you know, Vandy, 
you know, Pavia wasn't outstanding, but they had a little success with the run. They hung around, you know, make them one dimensional. And then you, then you step on their throat. And I want to argue with you, Jeff, today. You're not wrong. It's okay. not that you're wrong. It's that even if you go back and look at Mississippi state, I know you and you, you guys talked about this, honey. but this goes back to your number one though. Yeah. They win that game handedly. If they're not sloppy yeah. and there's not stuff to clean up. Uh, and I, and I kind of feel that way about Vanderbilt. It's like, well, at worst, that's a 17 point win. Yeah. 34, yeah. Vernon Broaden just doesn't launch yeah. himself into yes. the quarterback. And, you know, there are sometimes when I see those rough in the, the passer penalties and you just think to yourself, Oh, come on. Like what's that guy so, supposed to do? We tell him that's the target. Go yes. get him. But in a fraction of a second, pull back after you've been running like a bat out of hell. <laughs> so normally I, I have some sympathy but when a guy <laughs> comes off the ground yes, and launches right. his head at the quarterback and, and, and that wiped out a touchdown that makes it 17. And it's a different story. Different and then what story. happens? They keep the ball. Yeah. They go score a touchdown. Yeah. And now a 17-point game got back to a 10-point game, which got back to a three-point game. And it's kind of annoying because I see a lot of the national media reference – the three point win over Vanderbilt, but they never mentioned context, no. which is Texas led by double digits that entire game yeah. until the last minute. They yep. recover the onside kick. There was never any real jeopardy, mm -hmm. but sloppiness, all of the things that, to be fair, you have at number one, yeah. uh, is the reason why the optics of that game don't, don't look different than, don't look the same as the actual context of the game. You, you would have some people would, would make you believe that that was a close game and that, and that Texas was lucky to get away with a win. And it was like, no, Vanderbilt was really lucky that they didn't lose by three scores. Yeah. And you know, sometimes though the margins are like that. So, um, but look, what you're really saying is if the Texas defense comes to play, we know that, Florida is going to have a hard time passing the ball. They're yes. going to have to lean on the ground game. Yes. If Texas stops that, it forces Florida to really do the thing that it doesn't want to do. And that would, I think, spell real problematic uh, outcomes for, for Florida. My number four, God, this feels like a cliche because – the offensive line hasn't been bad, but you know what? Maybe I shouldn't nitpick you about the number one again, because I, I keep referencing things that fall into the category of number one, but stop committing penalties, stop holding, stop pre-snap penalties. It would be nice if a player is not going to win every snap unless they're Kelvin Banks. <laughs> But if there's 70 offensive snaps in this game and every guy on that offensive line has 65 really good ones, how about the five that aren't great aren't catastrophes? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's a difference between, oh, Cam, Cam Williams didn't win his, yeah. didn't really win his block that day. Well, what happened? Oh, well, nothing. Quinn got, it was a three step drop and Quinn got rid of the ball and, you know, there wasn't anything negative that happened on that play, despite the fact that Cam doesn't get a good grade, a good score mm. on that play. There's that, which is what you want on the occasion where, oh, I didn't, I didn't win. Because think about when we say that an offensive lineman wins 65 out of 70 snaps, we're talking about on the defensive side of the ball, what would the defensive tackle lost? Yeah. 65 out of 70? So, when they lose their battles, don't lose the battles. Yes. Don't don't let Quinn get blindsided. Don't Penalty let Quinn just get bum rushed. Yeah. Um, Communicate. You know, blitz pickups. Let's. You know. No go. one's asking for a perfect game, but let's no. mitigate disasters because when we reference the Vanderbilt game, a lot of that t passes. That yeah. You know what though. Those those things don't happen in a vacuum. They're, the, those Florida players 
will probably be taught, look, you're probably not going to get to the quarterback. But get your hands often. up, yeah. Uh, uh, hands in the air is as good of a, is as good of a sack. Yeah. And um, yeah. By the yeah, way, my dogs definitely. are upstairs. Can you hear? Is that showing up on the microphone? A little bit. Yeah. They are wrestling. Wound up Friday. They know you're it's leaving. It's like town. the Royal Rumble above. They know y'all are, right right are leaving town. They're trying to. Uh, they are. They're like, let's get yeah. it out. Yeah. I'm afraid that one of them's going to go through the windows up there <laughs> eventually. Um, all right, number five. There's a lot of meat on the bones yeah. still. So yeah. I'm curious. It's one of the reasons why with the offensive line, I was a little hesitant yeah. to call that one out because there are a lot of a lot of little things that I would like to see. Can I give you oh, – go ahead. I'll I'm give you go. some honorable I'm, mentions based on whatever okay. you don't pick. Well, I'm going to go – you mentioned it a minute ago, but I'm going to go uh, D-line as far as who fills that Vernon Broughton role. Right. Because, I mean, that's significant when you, when you consider that, that Florida is going to come in and be a run heavy team. You know, who's going to be that guy or which two guys, you know, because Broughton's been solid. Like he's, he's, a good made player. Some, he's made some money this year. So, and again, that's looking a little more micro than, than macro, but, you know, which guy is it? Is it Norton? Is it Lay? Is it, you know, Savea? Who, who is it that, that steps up and, and how do we, we compensate for, for the big man being out. <laughs> That's my number five. All right. Look, I left you a lot there. No, I'm going to take back my number four. Okay. Which I really can't. I already laid yeah, out. I was about to say, it's, it's there for eternity. I'm, but I'm striking it for the record unofficially. Okay. And I, I'll leave everything else alone. My honorable mention will simply be Isaiah Bond. Let's. A whole lot of what could ail Quinn Ewers and ail yeah. this offense and, and could really be aided with the return of not just Isaiah Bond, the football player, but Isaiah Bond, the difference maker. Mm -hmm. if, if he's anywhere close to 100%, he gives this Texas offense a weapon that we've learned they don't otherwise have without him, that they've yeah. got a rotation of five guys that they feel really good about. Yeah, But there's nobody else that can – can do what Isaiah Bond does for this offense, which is really scare the ever living crap out of opposing teams. When, he, when Sark says they're playing their safeties way back and not giving us the deep ball there, he's, he's really talking about the dynamic that Isaiah Bond gives and maybe Ryan Wingo to a certain extent, but these guys haven't been bombers down the field, but he gives that threat every, just by being on the field, they really need that guy to be the guy again. And it's been a while. I don't think yeah, I, I don't know. think people have really wrapped their heads around the idea that he got hurt in the Oklahoma game and really didn't have a, a like a, a role in what happened. He comes back against Georgia. He plays he catches a touchdown pass yeah. and a two-point conversion, but he really was a non-factor in that game. He was limited, yeah. And then they sit him out in the next week because he wasn't right and then missed most of the second half. Uh, in in the Georgia game, so they haven't you haven't had a healthy Isaiah Bond since September. Yeah, true. And yeah. it's November now. I know. So Sixty days. He he's the he's one of the few guys. There might be two. <clears throat> I'd probably put Jaden Blue in this category that need one step. Right, once just one step, and they can go. They can take it to the house. And for all the talent Texas has there's not, you know, there's not more than, like I said, a couple that, that put that fear and, and make the defense understand that, you know, if I miss this tackle, if I'm a step late, if I lean the wrong way, jump the wrong way, then, then it's going to be six. And Puts the defense on its heels. Yeah. And they that need is a that. lot better than them being on their toes. Yeah. And coming after, yeah. Yeah. Coming <laughs> after three and forcing the, forcing the Cam Williams, you know, struggle, but. We'll see. It's going to be a good one, man. Get after them Gators. Here's hoping that there's a performance so emphatic that it causes us to create a Groggy Dog T-shirt as a byproduct. Look, schools, yeah. business, promotions, embroidery, you name it. They do it. Let yes, them sir. be the printer of your dreams. There you go. go. Groggy Dog. It's actually Groggy Dog Online. Groggy, yes, sir. Groggy Dog Online .com. If we want to be exactly specific, let them be your branding experts. Check out the store. Like, 
go to the website and just they've got like a full experience tour of kind of the whole thing. I'm watching it right now. Um, <laughs> nice. Look and you, right? um, research. Yeah, no, I was like, you know what? My my intro wasn't great. I, See, you know, I, I, I was winging it instead of being fully Grab prepared. It. So I was like, okay. let's go over to Grog. Nice. Make sure that I say exactly what I need to say. Uh, yes, let them be your branding experts. Reach Please. out to Jeff directly oh, and he'll make sure that every step of any deal that you need to get done, whether it's for your team or your school or whatever, uh, or Christmas, you maybe yeah, need yeah. Lots a of whole family of, of orders and T-shirts and stuff, yeah. um, whatever. Whatever is that what they're there for. Whatever you need, they're there to help. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do this video without them. They're a fantastic partner of orangebloods.com. As you can see, Jeff is as burnt orange bleeding as it gets. So yeah. get money. In. Don't go Don't go someplace where you don't know where you're going. Yes. Don't go someplace blind. <laughs> go to the place that bleeds orange. Yes, we do. do. I do. We do. Let's do and it. And they're committed to making sure that uh, you're as happy as humanly possible. Look. Uh, like, comment, subscribe to the page. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, go Longhorns, tear up Florida tomorrow mm -hmm. so that we've got nothing but positivity heading in to Vietnam next week for <laughs> Jeff. And Jeff here on Orange Bloods Live, we will talk to you guys next week. You guys Thanks take care. care. Thanks, Later. guys.